for all of the discussions about um, downsizing or changing platforms or becoming digital, really what's emphasized here is journalism and ideas. I think it's such a privilege to be in a room with people who care as much about the work and bringing the best to readers um, as much as you do. And that's kind of, you know, when you leave here, you're like, you know what, today was a hard day or so-and-so got on my nerves, but you know what, we're going to make this great. The funnest part of being here is sort of rubbing up and being annealed by really great talent where you'll just say something that you know you know and you know is right and somebody else will say that's that's bullshit here's why people often talk about um, NPR having um, driveway moments which is you're in your car listening to radio and you pull into your driveway and um, you you know you don't want to turn the engine off because you're still listening to that story and I think part of what I'm trying to do at the times is create sort of driveway or sofa moments with New York Times journalism where you know you feel personally connected to a story and you can't put it down. It's kind of a quirky place you know every editor every reporter has something to say about a particular story a particular idea and we're constantly challenging each other and that makes things better that's kind of the secret sauce of the place. Their brand is is authority uh, and authoritativeness uh, and and uh, that flows from the extraordinary care that they take with international and national stories. Uh, and, and there really is no rival uh, to the thoroughness that, um, uh, that's demonstrated in everything they do. I trust the New York Times because if it gets it, if it, gets it wrong, it's going to tell me. Uh, it will correct a mistake. It will apologize for editorials that, in retrospect, went in the wrong direction. It's that capacity to acknowledge openly in print that it got it wrong that increases the confidence that readers like me have in the quality of what I'm reading. One of the things that you often hear leaders talk about is the need to improve communication. But communication is meaningless really, if people are saying things and not hearing what each other is saying, if words mean different things to different people. What the New York Times is doing around the world and in every industry is trying to translate not only the events of the day, but the language of the day, so we can better understand each other. What is the true nugget to be telling our audience right now, um, whether that's live tweeting or live blogging or for a big three-month reported page one story, I think we're always looking for you know, what's the truth? We have our leaders of the newsroom, but I think everyone, um, we're all self-directing, intelligent people, and so, you know, you know what readers expect of you. I couldn't be more appreciative of the honor and proud on behalf of my colleagues who work so hard uh, to not only cover the news, but dig and dig and dig and bring our readers the story behind the story. You know what the secret is at the New York Times? Canadians. They're really sweet and nice and they don't bring up hockey that often so they're not that hard to deal with. They're able to imitate Americans in spurts except the part about acting nasty. Canada should just go to the New York Times and do a survey and find out how much of the New York Times is actually powered by Canadians. It's, it's mind-blowing.